Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty, welcome to my YouTube channel. So for the very first time ever, we can now run a Direct X 12 game on an Apple Silicon Mac. So this is footage of Diablo 2 Resurrected running on the latest Crossover Nightly build. So if you didn't already know, Crossover is a compatibility layer which allows you to run Windows games on an Apple Silicon Mac. And one of the main limitations of Crossover is that Crossover didn't have Direct X 12 support. And Direct X 12 is used in many modern games. For example, the recently released Diablo 4 for games like Cyberpunk 2077, Elden Ring, etc. So the lack of DirectX 12 support has really been a sticking point. That is until today. If we look at the latest crossover nightly build, we can now run titles like Diablo 2 Resurrected. The experience is not yet perfect, but it's still very playable. I was able to play for a full 20 minutes without encountering a bug and the performance was surprisingly good. So today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about the crossover nightly build, how to get it working if you're interested in testing Testing it out and also about what the future of DirectX 12 is on the Apple Silicon Mac. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So the news about the latest DirectX 12 support on Crossover came in a very recent Cody Weaver's blog post outlining that an early form of DirectX 12 support would be coming to Crossover. They've outlined that Diablo 2 Resurrected is working on an early nightly build and this will be ready for the next release of Crossover 23 due this summer. However, this is actually something that you can try right now on your Mac. And today I'm gonna to show you how to get access to the nightly builds and test out the very first DirectX 12 game running on an Apple Silicon Mac. Just be aware that nightly builds are not officially supported and therefore you won't be able to ask for any help from the Code Weavers team. And in any case, if you wanna try this out, you're gonna need a crossover license. If you don't have one already, then make sure to click the link at the top of the description. Every purchase made after clicking the link helps to support this channel and the videos that I create. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to go to the beta tester website and then we need to enroll in the beta tester program. So make sure that you understand what being a beta tester means and then scroll to the bottom of this page and we're basically going to enroll using the same email address as your Code Weavers account. Click to agree and then click on make me a beta tester and then you're going to be opted into the beta tester program. So once you're enrolled you're going to have a new section on your account which is this button here which is the beta tester section and then we want to go to the nightly builds section here. So just be aware that nightly builds are not officially supported. They are going to be very buggy especially because new features are going to be integrated into nightly builds and they're going to have lots of issues. So here we're going to download the June the 1st nightly build which is at the top. Just click on this to download. Let's put this in our downloads folder. Now what we're going to do is go to finder and then go to the download section. I'm going to find the crossover nightly that we just downloaded. It's in a zip file here which we're going to double click on and now we have crossover. What I like to do is to rename crossover so that it contains the nightly number here. So then I know that this is a crossover version which is different from my main crossover and then I'm going to drag and drop this into my application applications folder and then it's going to sit beside my normal crossover here and also what I like to do is press go here hold down the option key to reveal this library section here then we're going to open this up go to application support and then go to crossover so I like to keep my main version of crossover and I'll rename my crossover bottle crossover main that means when I open my crossover nightly and I press open here then it's going to create its own crossover settings file and it's not going to interfere with my main bottles so now that crossover nightly is installed we're going to install the battle.net launcher just type in battle.net and then click on the desktop app and then we're going to press the install button and it's going to download and install battle.net we're going to go through this redistributable make sure it all installs press finish I found that this nightly build is a little bit buggy when creating new bottles and downloading software into them. Just persevere through and skip any steps that can't be completed. I think some of these dependencies are not necessarily required in order to get Battle.net desktop working. And now we have Battle.net app launching. I'm going to download and install the Windows version of Battle.net. Here we're going to untick this, press continue, and now it's installing Battle.net. I want to relaunch Battle.net. Now what we're going to do is to download and install Diablo 2 Resurrected. Of course, you need to make sure that you have Diablo 2 Resurrected purchased they're going to press install and then install the game within the bottle and then we're going to start Diablo 2 Resurrected so press play here and it's going to launch so the performance of Diablo 2 Resurrected is very impressive, especially considering that this is a DirectX 12 title. We're running this at 1080p on the very high graphics preset. And on my M1 Max chip, we're still getting a decent-ish frame rate of 25 to 30 or so FPS. And whilst most people would consider this a kind of remaster of an old game, and therefore it should probably run a little bit faster on hardware like this, just remember that Crossover 23 is still in very, very early alpha. And this is not indicative of what future performance is like, and nevertheless, it's 
it's quite an incredible achievement. DirectX 12 is running through DXVK, Molten VK, plus the Rosetta 2 translation layer, and a huge amount of technical barriers had to be crossed in order to get this game running on an Apple Silicon Mac at all. This included issues with Molten VK and SPIRV Cross, and going forward, it looks like future development is going to be focused on per game fixes. And really, we have to be aware that DirectX 12 is quite a complex graphics API, and getting Diablo 2 resurrected to work on a Mac is quite an achievement. However, under the hood, it's still a very old game. The graphical features built on top probably only represent the most basic implementation of DirectX 12. If we wanted to get games like Cyberpunk 2077 or Elden Ring working on the Mac, then there's probably a huge amount more work left to do. So anyway, this is a really exciting first step. I can't wait to see what co-weavers achieve in the coming months and years. Hopefully a lot more DirectX 12 titles are going to be supported, and maybe even one day we can get something like Diablo 4 working on the Apple Silicon Mac 2. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.